Good morning. Am I on? I should be on. Can you check the, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Is it on now? No, still not on. I will talk loud. Hopefully the speakers are on, but, uh, or we'll get on soon, but uh, I don't have any announcements regarding the worship service itself, so let's begin with our opening hymn. That is hymn number 729, 729. Working? All right, uh, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father. A sinner, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. It is my privilege as a called and ordained servant of Christ to announce God's grace to all of you. All of our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be strong and let your heart take courage. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my, God. my times are in your hand. Make your face shine on your servant. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have sent, set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates, vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to help me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them wear out like a, will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed, and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grape vine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered to them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, 
and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind can be driven out, cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, number 526. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for this morning is our gospel lesson as it was read earlier. Uh, if you are anything like me, you're probably 
don't like tele-evangelists very much, do you? Some people are a little bit shocked when they hear me say that, uh, but I'm not a big fan of tele-evangelism. I, I can't listen to it anymore. Uh, even if it's a good one who, who really does actually care about people, I, I have a hard time listening to them because most of them, what they teach or what they preach is downright harmful. Okay? When I think about a tele-evangelist, I think of somebody like, um, like Steve Martin in the movie Leap of Faith, if we could have our, our picture up here. Steve Martin in the, in the movie Leap of Faith, you know, where he's up there and he's, you know, all, it's all about him and blah, 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 and he tells, uh, and, and, and all of that stuff, and, you know, tells people, oh, as long as you believe hard enough, uh, you'll be healed and stuff like that. Um, I also think of a pro athlete that I, that I heard speak once who was a Christian uh, who, who was basically telling people that if you believed hard enough, then you could become the MVP of the NFL also. Tele-evangelists are always telling you stuff like that, that as long as you believe strong enough, as long as you believe hard enough, God will give you whatever you ask for. That is completely not true. In fact, our gospel lesson for today flies in the face of that message, of those types of teachings. You know, a man came up to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal his son, saying the words, if you can heal him. And Jesus responds with, if you can, anything is possible for the one who believes. And the man replies, I do believe. Help my un." belief. Doesn't sound like that man had very much faith or a very strong faith, does it? His faith was pretty weak, and yet Jesus still healed his son, didn't he? It didn't matter whether the man had a strong faith or a weak faith. Jesus still healed his son. Do you remember what Jesus said about the mustard seed? If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can do amazing things. It doesn't matter how strong your faith is. This is a hard lesson to take. A valuable one, but a hard one to take. It's hard because we like to have some measure of control don't we? We don't want to leave everything completely and totally in God's hands. We want to be able to affect the outcome in some way, don't we? And that's why it's so easy to believe it when someone like a tele-evangelist tells us, as long as you believe hard enough and strong enough, God will give you what you ask for. The reality is it doesn't depend upon us at all. Let me make one thing clear. There are definitely things in this life and in this world that completely depend upon us, right? How successful you are at your job, okay? How well you raise your children. Things like those and many others like them depend completely and totally upon us. But when it comes to God blessing us, God giving us his blessings, it doesn't depend upon us at all. I've said it many times, I'll say it again, God is not an ATM machine. As long as you push the right buttons, he'll give you what you want. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter how good you are at keeping the Ten Commandments or how good you are at loving your neighbor as yourself or how good you are at love, uh, loving the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and spirit. It doesn't even matter how strong your faith is. The only thing that matters when it comes to God blessing us, the only thing that matters is God himself, specifically his love, his grace, and his wisdom. You see, God gives us two types of blessings in life, doesn't he? Uh, the first type of blessing that he gives us are spiritual blessings. God always gives us spiritual blessings. He will never, ever say no if you ask him for a spiritual blessing. And he promises to always give us his spiritual blessing. Things like he will always love us. He will always forgive us. He has a place prepared for you by his side in heaven. He will always give us those things. The second type of blessings that God gives to us are earthly 
blessings. These are the type of blessings that tele-evangelists focus on, don't they? They are things like a good job, a loving family, faithful friends, a nice home, food and, and clothing, good health, things like that. Those are all earthly blessings. And God doesn't always give us earthly blessings. He doesn't necessarily promise to give us them either. He does promise to give us what we need, but he doesn't promise to give us everything we want. But for some reason, a lot of false teachers out there keep preaching that as long as you believe strong enough, God will give you whatever earthly blessing you ask for, and people still keep falling for it, like they did in Leap of Faith. Usually, I think they, they keep falling for it because they see these televangelists in their snazzy three-piece suits, uh, living in a mansion, having their own private plane, and they say, look, God gave them what he wanted, so why won't he give me what I want as well? But the truth is, God sometimes gives us earthly blessings, the earthly blessings that we ask for, and sometimes he doesn't. I don't know why. God doesn't tell us why. What God does tell us is he tells us this. He tells us that he loves us greatly. He tells us that he wants to shower us with blessings. So if God doesn't give you something you ask for, you can trust that it's for a very good reason. Because God loves you and he wants to bless you. But if he doesn't, it's probably for a very good reason. After all, God is so much wiser and knows so much more than we possibly can. What I want to make perfectly clear is this. If God does not give you something you ask for, it's not because your faith wasn't strong enough. Okay? It is not your fault if God doesn't give you something you ask for. It's not your fault. It's not because you weren't strong enough in your faith. It is simply because God has something else in mind, usually something much better than what we ask for. Even if you can't see it at the time, even if you can't know it at the time, it, that's usually the case. Do you remember when uh, Paul was asking God to remove the thorn from his flesh and God responded, No, because my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is not made perfect in strength, but in weakness. He, showed us, he shows us that in our gospel lesson for today, doesn't he? Jesus healed the man's son even though the man's faith was weak, perhaps because the man's faith was weak, right? After all, the man said, I do believe, help my unbelief. Maybe Jesus was helping his unbelief by healing his son. God's blessings don't depend upon how good of a Christian you are, how strong your faith is, how bad of a Christian you are, how weak your faith is. It doesn't depend on any of that whatsoever. God's blessings simply and solely depend upon his love, his grace, and his wisdom. That doesn't mean that it's a bad thing to be a good Christian or to have a strong faith. Those are definitely good things. But think about it like this. A truly good Christian, a person with a truly strong faith, will always point to Jesus and what God has done for them, rather than point to themselves and talk about how strong their faith is. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Amen. Please rise as we bring our offerings forward and sing our offertory. Uh, it's printed out for you. It'll be up on, on the screen as well.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, many are the times when we catch ourselves trapped in this mindset of, well, God didn't give me what I want, so what did I do wrong that he wouldn't give it to me? Help us to realize that, that the blessings that you give to us aren't dependent upon how good we are, how strong we are in our faith, what we do or what we don't do, but they are simply and solely based upon your love, your mercy, your grace, and your wisdom. Sometimes you know things that, or many times you know things that we don't know, and you see things that we don't see. And so out of your wisdom and your love, you sometimes don't give us what we ask for. Help us to trust in you and realize that that's for best, even when we can't see it at the time. There's Jesus. Many are the times when you brought healing, as you did in our gospel lesson today, even to those who maybe didn't have as strong of a faith as others did. We pray for your healing touch upon those who need it this coming week, for those who are sick or hospitalized. We pray especially for Duffy as he's going in for surgery tomorrow, that you would be with him, guide the surgeons, and uh, help him to recover quickly from that. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and who mourn their passing. Uh, we pray for those who are lonely, for those who are depressed, for those who battle against some form of addiction, that your strength and your comfort would be a strength and comfort to them, and that they would know the joy of your hope and peace. And dear Holy Spirit, uh, we pray this morning for all of our farmers as they're getting ready for the harvest. We pray that they have a good harvest. We pray for a little bit of rain at this time because the ground is very dry. Uh, we pray that, uh, that uh, you would continue to watch over and bless all of our farmers. They work hard for so many of us, and we are truly grateful for all that they do. Please watch over them and bless them, uh, not just at harvest time, but throughout the year. For we pray all of these things in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue now with the preface and the sanctus to Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the flesh and laid upon him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy upon us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. to our Lord's table. Take and eat. The true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Take and drink. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith to life everlasting. Jesus Christ, shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Take and drink. The true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. now this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Welcome to our Lord's table. this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith till life everlasting. Go in peace.
Welcome to our Lord's table. this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Welcome to our Lord's table. this precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true Christian faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Please rise and let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
Good morning once again. Uh, a few brief announcements before we uh, go our way here this morning. Um, don't forget, of course, Sunday school uh, down in the fellowship hall immediately following service, as well as adult Bible class in the uh, cry room right there uh, immediately following the service. Uh, please also don't forget we do have sign-up sheets up on the bulletin board for bringing treats um, on Sunday mornings, um, um, uh, for reading, for ushering, uh, helping out with technology, all of those types of things. If you're willing and able to help out with any of that, uh, please look at the uh, sign-up sheets out on the bulletin board. Also, Brooke, uh, before, before she gives birth uh, in a week or two, uh, she did put up a new bulletin board out there, so everybody take a take a good look at it here this morning. She puts a lot of work and effort into, into our bulletin boards, and so we're thankful for that. Um, elders meeting is coming up on the 19th. Uh, that's a Thursday. Um, it says in our bulletin that our next um, council meeting is on a Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We can't do that, uh, so we'll get the date changed for that and have the correct date hopefully next, next week uh, for you for that. And then we have one last announcement from Tom. And we, we ha and, and, and there's something new this year, I think, with Oktoberfest. Is there not? Did you want to announce it or not announce it? <laughs> We're having beer for the first time at Oktoberfest. So, so, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> More details will be coming up about that as well. All right. Uh, God's blessings on your week. We look forward to seeing you again next week.